everyone. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are up in, a, not at home at all, we are in Moniac Moor, the Writers uh, Centre in Scotland, the Writers Centre of Scotland, what Creative do you call it? Creative Writing, Writing Centre. Centre um, a beautiful setting with, we've had quite a lot of snow, which yeah. has been amazing, but not too much so that we can't leave the place, which is maybe sad, I don't know. Um, and yeah, we've been just done two days of workshops up here with some kids and young adults, which have just been really lovely. We were up here when Molly was six months old, and now Emmy's six months old, and we're back here, and it feels very special. I saw a good ice rink place to skate on. Come on! Come on, Daddy! What we thought we'd bring you today is a concert of songs inspired by folk tales um, seeing as it's such a kind of like a magical place around here we thought that'd be nice and also it means we delve into our back catalogue to bring out some songs we haven't played for a while and our future catalogue of songs we haven't released yet so we thought it could be quite a good good little challenge for us um, and I'll try and get some shots of the area and this amazing room as well while we're while we're here. It's called the Hobbit House. Yeah. The, 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 the space we're in right now is kind of like a roundhouse. Like Lots of Yeah, and... it's got a grassy roof outside, but you'll, yeah, we'll show you some pictures of it because it's yeah. quite a special place. Right, so we will dive in to our first song. So the first song we're going to do on our folk tale journey is inspired by a Japanese folk story called The Stonecutter and it's about an old man who spends his life chipping away on the rock face to earn his living and one day the spirit of the mountain comes to him and says old man what do you wish for and he says I want to be rich so he becomes rich and he's exceedingly happy for a while and then he looks up and he feels the sun constantly in his eyes and burning him and he thinks do you know what it's better to be the sun i'm going to be the sun so he becomes the sun and he's very very happy shining on everybody feeling particularly glorious the whole time but then these clouds keep coming in and getting in the way of his sunlight and he thinks oh maybe it's better to be a cloud um, so he becomes a cloud and he's very happy. He gets in the way of the sun. He rains on the earth and causes great floods. Um, and after a particularly enormous flood, he's just created and feel, feels quite proud of. He looks down and sees a big rock that's left in the ground. And he thinks, ah, defeated again. It's better to be a rock, the most eternal thing you could be. And so he becomes a rock. He's very happy. Um, until one day an old stonecutter comes along and starts chipping away at the side and he thinks oh, maybe I should have just been who I was so this song is inspired by that it's pretty much a retelling of it um, and it's called The Stonecutter <laughs> Shame that I will live modestly A poor stone cutter eternally Grant you a wish now Who would you be?
it's really lovely to play all these songs again that we haven't played for a long, long time. Um, yeah, great. Yeah. I really that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really nice playing. Uh, yeah, the back catalogue of um, songs that we have and having the opportunity to to do that and to to start theming these um, these sessions. And when we were singing this song, I kept thinking, you can see out the window we're here at Moniac Moor and the Highlands, and you can see the mountains. I was imagining the stonecutter being the mountains and the sun is shining. So imagining being the sun and yeah, all the scenery around here. I felt like it was quite quite representative of um, those changes. I wonder what the snow would have been, because the snow covers everybody, the mountains, the people. I guess it gets melted by the sun. No, the snow wouldn't. Yeah, it's a bit like paper, scissors, stone, isn't it? Is it that? is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, something for everyone. Um, but it is a good moral. It's, yeah, be who you are. Um, so the next song we're going to do is inspired by a book, um, a, well, a collection of, of folk stories, really, um, Quite, I think most of them are ghost stories um, in a book, a collection of stories called The Mistletoe Bride by Kate Moss, Moss with an E. And we did a story, did a song inspired by The Mistletoe Bride, but this one is inspired by the Anku. And the Anku is the person that takes, has the gruesome job of taking the dead bodies, the dead souls um, across the water to this island where it's kind of like a holding place between being alive and dead and this... Yeah, the Anku is given this job to, to do that um, and doesn't seem to complain about it. But in the story, there's um, a young boy who's kind of starting to see all this happen. He's never really um, seen it before, but his grandfather has told him that there are such people that exist. So, yeah, it's quite a, quite a gruesome. And it's a, I think it's an old Breton tale, so it's retold by Kate Moss in the book. <laughs> I couldn't decide what percussion instrument to use, so I'm just going to use this bag of percussion. Um, <laughs> I like that there's recorders in there as well. <laughs> they blow themselves. Um, so this is the Anku. It's quite a long and epic storytelling song. So um, here we go. <laughs> Heave ho. Here we go. far and getting short of light I saw a village down below a shelter for the night I saw a figure crouching down attending to a sheep the animal had lost its life the mountainside was steep oh no here oh we go no. heave ho we take the bones heave ho here we go the souls we have to row The morning brought the fishermen, I thought that I could help They kept a distance from the man, but why I couldn't tell Feeling sorrow for the man, I went to hear his say He told a story burnt and part when I was dragged away I couldn't settle in my mind, so set to cross the sand Asked if I could go with him to see and the island Set 
every relief to have a seat What I could not believe to be a son were left behind Why is this? I cried to him, I thought it was unkind They do not deserve it, yet they won't be safe for now Grandfather had told me this, the man was the Anku The dead they scrambled from the boat and when we got to shore The smell was awfully sickening, they used me as a floor took us to the sand what I what I saw out there that night will never leave my mind the man was called to do this thing most gruesome of its kind oh no here we go heave ho as we roll heave ho it's all the bones the dead they have to go oh no here we go heave ho we take the bones Row and go. <laughs> Do you like the bell? <laughs> the bell was like the main thing. It was sort of, it was like a sort of a shit bell, totally. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. Except, except it was a ghostly shit bell. It's a wrong. Was it? Oh, it was three. What so? No, what notes have you got there? No, those. Oh. Not that one. That one. Uh, so that was a C. Oh, okay. Can't even do. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, lovely. So, um, yeah, that was the Anku, um, a gruesome story. Um, so we do have a PayPal link uh, tip jar uh, for tonight's concert, and um, which will be in the link somewhere. Um, and if anyone would like to sign up uh, and become a bookshop bound Patreon, there's details in that too. All right. So next, what have we got next? Sirens. Uh, another blast from the past. So I, I literally don't know when we last played this. It must have been two thousand and fifteen or something, or fourteen. Um, we wrote it when we first started the events at Mister B's, um, and the first season was all about books from different countries, and Mister B's themed each event around the different country. And it hadn't really crossed our minds to read the books of the visiting author. You know, we didn't really have that much time. Um, and so we picked folk stories uh, from those countries to write a song inspired by. So this came from Greek Night. Um, you you chose, oh no, was it, did you choose, which one did you do? Did you do one from Greek Night? I can't remember. So I long ago. Remember. So long ago. Anyway, one of, one of the ones we did for Greek Night was um, inspired by the siren myth of these um, wonderful singing sirens luring sailors to their doom um, and often when we write a song it's the songs can be quite personal as well so you sort of take the the theme or the book or the context of what you're writing and the language and the story and the imagery um, but my, most songs we write are, end up being quite personal or our personal response to that and I remember at the time, like, I just spent about 10 years in a band, not, you know, making really nice music, a band called Eurison, um, they're probably on Spotify still, um, but it never really went anywhere, it was very much make or break, and we broke, um, but I was kind of embarking on, well, I wasn't sure where this bookshop band journey was going to go, we were just starting, it was just a fun songwriting project, um, and this was like two nights in or something. Um, but that whole decision to become a musician, to let let the music lure you into something beautiful, but, you know, would it end up in disaster or just being shipwrecked on the side? So it felt like music was a siren for me at that time, and I wasn't sure, you know, whether it was something I could tame and wield or would destroy me. So... Uh, that's in the song. In hindsight, well. which do you think it was? I have no idea. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. 
Right, it's gonna get my guitar. So I think when we were well, when we were doing these, we had Poppy, who was um, our third member, and she was she wrote quite a lot of um, those first album songs as well. So mm. um, I think she might have done the other Greek one. Yeah, she one. might have done the other Greek one. Yeah, Psyche and Cupid. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Right, Sirens Island.
Good. Yeah. Festival. So actually, by the time we put this out, which would be probably the week after, we'll have done it. But um, yeah, we're sort of chasing the snow. The snow's come up here, and um, apparently it's going to be south of Edinburgh. So we'll be following the snow line down, which would be quite fun, as long as we don't hit it. Yeah. I think Molly's very much enjoying having some snow. It's quite a quite a novelty for yeah. her, and Emmy's never seen snow, so this is good. Recently, I had this idea that it'd be really nice to do some children's concerts in a bookshop, a local bookshop called Foggy Toddle in um, Wigtown, and that 
it'd be really lovely to to do a mix of songs, so a mixture of classical and folk music and nursery rhymes, but in the form of a concert to little people from newborns to, I don't know, whatever age can come along. I mean, really, it could be for anybody at all, but it's a very small space, so little people are very welcome. And um, so we, so one of the songs that I wanted to work up for the first session, which was A is for Animals, was uh, a song that I'd heard Laura Veers do um, on her Tumblebee album called The Hungry Fox. I think it might, might be just called The Fox on her album. But then I looked, I was going through um, my Steve Roud um, kind of ink book of English folk songs and I found that The Hungry Fox was in there with a slightly different tune. And so then I've taken the words from that book and then mixed it with a tune that is maybe more of an American folk tune and mm -hmm. put it together um, for, yeah, to, for The Hungry Fox. So we'll do that one next. I need to get a different instrument. And the word's quite old then for this uh, one. Yeah, I think they are. I actually don't know how old they are and these are I've slightly... Yeah, no, I think I have used the words from there. So I, I don't know how old these ones are, but probably more than 100 years, possibly. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I might be wrong about that. Where could they be? It's quite hard to find places to hide. I'm going to gonna... count two. Oh, can you hear that echo? Two. So this is the hungry fox. Um, just a warning that the goose doesn't come off that well in this one. A fox jumped up on a cold, cold night And he begged for the moon to give him life For he had many miles to trot that night Before he got back to his den o den o den o He had many miles to trot that night Before he got back to his den o At last he got to the old farmyard Where to him the geese and hens were barred But he always got one by working hard before he got back to his den, no, oh, den, no, oh, den, no. Oh. He always got one by working hard to take back to his den, no. Oh. He grabbed the grey goose by the neck and slung him right across his back. And the old grey goose went quack, 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 but the fox was back to his den, no, oh, den, no, oh, den, no. Oh. The old grey goose went. Quack, quack, but the fox was off to his den, no. Flipper Flopper jumped out of bed And out of the window she poked her head She said, John, John, the grey goose is gone And the fox is off to his den, no oh, Den, no oh, den, no oh, John, John, the grey goose is gone And the fox is off to his den, no oh. John went up to the top of the hill And he blew his trumpet loud and shrill Said the fox, that's very pretty music still I'd rather be in my den, no, den, no, den, no, said the fox, that's very pretty music still, I'd rather be in my den, no. Soon the fox got back to his den, to his dear little foxes, eight, nine, ten. And they've had many fat geese since then, and sometimes a great fat hen, no, hen, no, hen, no. They've had many fat geese since then, and sometimes a big fat hen, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still learning that one. Um, but I would check out Laura Veer's um, Tumblebee album, especially if you've got kids, because it's a really nice kind of gentle, um, kind of soothing album, although some of the subjects are quite dark um, as well. So it's a, it's a bit of 
bit of both. Nice for adults as well. It's we really, enjoy listening it's to really, it. Really, really good album. Yeah. 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 Thoroughly recommend it. Yeah, and actually, I'm on just kind of listening to that. I then more recently, I've been listening to lots of Peggy Seeger, and um, she also does a lot of these songs. So you might recognise them from then. And yeah, I've been down a Peggy Seeger. Um, kind of wormhole I suppose yeah. listening to lots of different songs and so I might try learning one or two of those soon so we're going to play one of the songs from our new-ish children's album next and instead of playing it with instruments here and now we're going to play you a recording of it um, because it means that you get a chance to hear all the musicians that went on this on this recording as well so we were lucky enough to work with um, Ruth Morris and Gavin Marwick and Stuart McPherson and Wendy Stewart and all the way over uh, in Galicia we got to work with Man- Mano, <laughs> Mano, keep saying Manu, Manu and he played amazing pipes on this tune so the, the, the song is actually about um, a boy or a young man who is a shepherd and his brothers are amazing pipers, the brilliant bagpipers. And he's just not blessed with this talent of playing the pipes. Um, he's a lowly shepherd, but he goes to sleep in the hay one day and awakes in a kind of dream and discovers this fairy door. And he goes through this fairy door and meets a man who is able to grant him this kind of wish or desire to play the pipes better than his brothers, that be the best piper ever. And so he becomes that, but he has to keep a promise not to really acknowledge this man in the future. Um, because if he does, then the, um, the spell will be broken, basically, and he won't be able to play the pipes anymore. So he goes along being this amazing piper for much of his life, and it's all is happy and well. And then, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but um, as things tend to in these stories, it, it went a bit wrong but um, we thought we'd play the song to you in the form of a video so that you can hear it and hear what we well the, a bit of a taster to the children's album that we have coming up Dream as I did before 
So we are going to finish off this Bookshop Band Does Folk Stories um, little concert um, with another song from that children's album um, inspired by Scottish literature and stories. Um, and this one is, the song is called The Carl in the Cairnsmore and that's the name of the folk story as well. And it's a local tale to Dumfries and Galloway. Um, it's lovely to play it here in the mountains because it's about the fairy queen who lives underneath uh, Cairnsmore in Galloway. And I, I chose this one because a lot of the stories I'd read from Galloway had very dark and miserable endings, but this one was quite kind of uplifting. And it's about a man called Abram Fell who kind of loses all his inheritance and his standing in the world. Um, and as a consequence, the he cannot marry the lady that he loves. Um, he is refused uh, to marry her by her father. And so he, he sort of becomes a, a desolate man wandering lost in the in the woods um, but the fairy folk take pity on their plight and they c capture uh, the the girl called Katie Bell and take her down underneath the mountains and they also capture Abram Fell and they take him down and the story takes place under the mountains with the Carl and Kensmore, the fairy queen, reintroducing them and trying to turn their luck around. So um, that is uh, the song which we'll finish off with. It's called the Carl and Kensmore. <laughs> Take him to a lair under there. It's what the queen would do down a mile for a while. Show a little care to what's down there. No home of Adam, some but calling queens and fairies fair. Not all will leave this home for a while. Meanwhile, elves cast spells. Silken hair was Katie Bell, his love true. See a smile. Meanwhile, Elves cast spells. Taking you down 
Thanks very much for tuning in, for listening again. We really enjoyed doing another concert and rediscovering songs and playing any new songs. It's been really lovely. Please do check out our Patreon page and please do look at, for the PayPal link for the um, concert. Um, it's really amazing to have your support. Um, we're, we are kind of struggling a little bit with um, having the two kids and the fact that we work together makes it quite difficult to, to work. So we do appreciate every every single bit of support that you give us thank you we're recording some workshops and we're just about to start recording um, some podcasts with the authors which like in their raw form they're going to be sort of available through our patreon um, but yeah it's been a real pleasure to play for you here uh, in a place quite different to where we would normally at Moniac Moor the creative writing centre of Scotland up near Inverness um, I hope you've enjoyed some of the, the pictures of the vista around um, but yeah it's been lovely to be here and to bring you guys here too so uh, have a lovely rest of month and we'll try and bring you another themed concert next month thank you bye, bye.